Europe, the continent with a long history of white-on-white -white violence. <laughs> Unfortunately, Europe is not having a good time right now. There's still a war in Ukraine, which is also causing an energy crisis. Italy's prime minister has called it quits. Britain has lost its leadership, which means now they'll have to find another magic spell to turn a dandelion into a prime minister. <laughs> Plus, for the first time ever, the euro has become less valuable than the dollar. Yeah. And with the economy struggling, European workers are now limited to only 45 weeks of vacation a year. <laughs> and as if all of that wasn't enough, now Europe is dealing with a hot girl summer that nobody asked for. The triple digit temperatures that have sparked forest fires and drought conditions here in the States are also taking hold in Europe. This morning, people are being warned to take cover as deadly heat sweeps across Britain. The National Weather Service issuing the first ever extreme heat warning with forecast highs of 105 today and tomorrow, hotter than the Sahara Desert and Delhi. The scorching heat is bearing down on all of Western Europe, fueling out of control wildfires. In southwest France, planes dumped yet more water over wildfires that have burned an area bigger than 20,000 football fields. The heat is causing havoc. London's Luton Airport and an RAF base in Oxfordshire both being forced to close because the runways were melting. Mamma mia! Sacre bleu! Bloody ball sweat! <laughs> The runways in Europe are melting. Did you hear that? The runways are melting. You never want to land a plane and hear it go, ah, 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 ah. And what do you even do in that situation? What do you do? Like, if the runway's melted, where's the plane gonna land? In the baby's mouth? That's right, open up, baby. Please, baby, the plane needs you, baby. Ah! You know, this is one of those situations where you really appreciate how calm a pilot is, you know? Because, like, even when a runway's melting, I bet the pilot's just gonna be there like, ladies and gentlemen, it seems the uh, airplane is melting into the ground, so uh, <laughs> I'm gonna suggest everyone get back to their seats. Uh, hold on, now it seems like a portal to the underworld is opened and we are <laughs> slowly being sucked by the devil himself, so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the fasten seatbelt sign. <laughs> Sit back, relax, and enjoy the flight. <laughs> but yes. Europe is scorching hot right now. And it's so bad that there were photos going around today of people pouring water in the mouths of the guards at Buckingham Palace. Yeah. I mean, if, if I had to make a suggestion, though, maybe the first thing I would do in a heat wave is lose the 10-foot hat, <laughs> covered entirely in fur, or at least fill it with ice. It looks like it would be a good cooler, you know? And remember, remember, you might be hearing those temperatures in America going like, oh, 100 degrees, that doesn't sound bad. But remember, this heat wave is especially bad for Europe because Europeans are not prepared for this kind of heat. Yeah, they don't use air conditioners in most parts of Europe. They don't even put ice in their drinks. And they can get sunburnt from, like, a camera flash. Ah, 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 ah. So how do I look? <laughs> so, once again, all over the world, we're experiencing record temperatures, wildfires, and droughts. And I mean, I know it can't be climate change because Fox says that's not real, so <laughs> it's probably pronouns? Is it pronouns? <laughs> I heard those are pretty bad. Anyway, let's move on from Europe to another place that's feeling the heat, the White House. After being unable to accomplish anything that Joe Biden has campaigned on, <laughs> the president's approval rating is now hovering somewhere between long COVID and Uvalde police departments. <laughs> and making matters worse for him is a runaway inflation, right? especially when it comes to gas prices. The prices of gas are so high that these days, driving is the entire date. You know, it's just like, <laughs> he really spoiled me last night. We, we drove all the way from my house to the end of the block. Oh, he's so romantic. But here's the thing, here's the thing. Until gas prices improve, neither will, will Joe Biden's approval rating, right? Which is why over the weekend, he was in Saudi Arabia making nice with a frenemy who just happens to own a lot of oil. It was the fist bump seen around the world. The president with Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, the man the U.S. holds responsible for the murder of journalist Jamal Khashoggi. It's the image the Saudis had hoped for and the White House had hoped to avoid. Biden's doctors reportedly disallowed handshakes due to COVID, but conveniently also helped the president avoid a photo op of shaking the hand of the Crown Prince. Do you regret the fist bump, Mr. President? Talk about something that matters. Yeah! Yeah! Stop asking! 
asking him about the fist bump. Ask him about the looming recession. No, actually, just ask me about the fist bump. Ask me about the fist bump. <laughs> America obsesses about these things. No, don't look too friendly. Don't do it. It's also funny how President Biden thought it would be better to fist bump Mohammed bin Salman because that seems less friendly than a handshake. <laughs> That's the whitest decision of all time. <laughs> no, because it's the opposite. Handshakes are the most formal way to meet someone. Even your enemy, you can be like, hello. <laughs> but fist bumps is always like, eh, hey, what's up? What's up, killer? I see you. I see you, man. I see you, player. You know what I really think happened? I think Joe Biden's team briefed him. And they were like, Mr. President, in Saudi Arabia, if you make them mad, and you have, they'll uh, chop off your hands. So uh, you want to hide your fingers, get in, quick, in and out, in and out. <laughs> Godspeed, Mr. President. <laughs> you know what Biden should have done if he didn't want any controversy in this? Is he should have gone in for the handshake and then given him the psych. <laughs> just, just do that move. There's no comeback for that. Devastating. If he did that, MBS would have been like, oh, just take all the oil and go. Don't tell my friends. Don't tell my friends. <laughs> and, okay, if you're wondering why this, this situation is so awkward, right? Oh, who cares? He fist bumped him. He met him. Why is it so bad? It's because back during the presidential campaign, Biden was saying things like this. Khashoggi was, in fact, murdered and dismembered. And I believe in the order of the crown prince. There's very little social redeeming value of the, in the present uh, government in Saudi Arabia. We were gonna, in fact, make them pay the price and make them, in fact, the pariah that they are. Awkward. <laughs> yeah, because how do you go from that to flying across the world to meet the guy in his palace? And Biden must have been a little nervous. You know, you meet the guy and you've said all these things about him, call him a murderer, call him, and now you're in his palace? He's gonna be walking in like, oh, come on, you, you've watched Fox News. I just read the teleprompter, man. I, I don't even know where I am most of the time. That wasn't me. <laughs> and unfortunately for President Biden, the bad news didn't stop at his presidential pound. Yes, because when Biden got back to the US, he had to deal with another all-powerful dictator, Joe Manchin, West Virginia Democrat, and somehow the real president of the United States. <laughs> because you see, Biden has spent the last two years trying to get Joe Manchin to vote for his Build Back Better bill. But Manchin has spent the last two years saying no. And he's been giving a variety of answers, you know? Oh, I don't want to risk inflation. I don't want to end offshore drilling. I'm a Gemini and Mercury's in retrograde. <laughs> Now's not a good time to make big decisions. <laughs> so after a lot of back and forth, Manchin said, look, I'll do a much smaller bill that only has some health insurance expansions and the climate change stuff, and then like you can raise taxes on corporations to pay for it. So Democrats took out everything Manchin didn't want and came back last week with a bill that only has what he asked for. To which Joe Manson said, oh. More now from Capitol Hill, where Democrats are extremely upset with Senator Joe Manchin after he effectively torpedoed their hopes of acting on climate change. It comes after Manchin told Democratic leadership he is not willing to back major climate and tax provisions in President Biden's agenda. Senator Bernie Sanders was especially upset over the weekend, suggesting Manchin never negotiated in good faith in the first place. People like Manchin, cinema, cinema to a lesser degree, who are intentionally sabotaging the president's agenda, what the American people want, what a majority of us in the Democratic caucus want. Nothing new about this. Yep, Bernie's pissed off. <laughs> yeah, I haven't seen him this pissed since someone tried to give him 1% milk. I stand with the 99% fat milk that's been excluded from the dairy aisle for far too long. No more with the 1%. And I get it. I get why Democrats are frustrated with Joe Manchin, because he's on your team. He's wearing your jersey, but every time he gets the ball, he dunks on you. <laughs> but if Joe Manchin doesn't believe in these policies, the least he could do is just say so up front instead of wasting everybody's time and jerking the Democrats around for a year, <laughs> pretending there was something they could do to win him over. <laughs> you know what this, you know this reminds me of? This reminds me of the time I tried to take a girl to the prom, right? <laughs> And she was like, well, first you have to buy me flowers, then you have to rent a limo, then we have to go somewhere nice for dinner. And I did all of that, and then the night of the prom came and she was like, I don't think that as your history teacher this is appropriate for me to go at the prom with you. Why am I going to the prom? Why didn't you say that at the beginning, Mrs. Jenkins? Because now I'm broken, I don't have a date. Why is she so big? Come on. <laughs> 
She was a very interesting person. <laughs> All right, finally, some news from the world of automobiles, transformers that never went through puberty. Every year, car companies compete to see who can offer the most exciting new options, you know, like voice-activated controls or augmented reality windshields or trunks that have got a lot more junk. Yeah, you're looking good, so then I see you. I see you. But the latest innovation isn't a new feature. No, it's a new way to pay for what you get. A new kind of subscription could be making its way to your bank statements. BMW says that it will start charging a monthly fee for heated seats. It costs about $12 a month and would allow the car maker to activate the heating coils already built into the seats. You can purchase the heated seats when you buy the car. But for those who didn't, you can at least temporarily try them out on a cold day with the subscription. They're also considering a subscription service for heated steering wheels. Hmm. That's interesting. BMW is going to let people subscribe for certain features in the car, like heated seats. Yeah, so instead of just buying it, you pay month to month. Which I'll be honest, actually sounds great, because I, I don't need heated seats in the summer. So why am I paying? Huh? They should do this for every feature. The radio, the windshield wipers. <laughs> yeah, the horn. I don't need the horn all the time. I want to subscribe to the horn if I get cut off. This mother, yo, give me three, give me three. Load it up, give me three. I'm gonna light his ass up. But there's a downside. You realize there's a downside to this, right? Car manufacturers are joining the subscription model, and we know how this goes. First you buy things, then they go, oh, now you subscribe. And then how does it end? It always ends with ads, always. It's only a matter of time before you buy a BMW and then you're gonna have to like listen to a mattress ad every time you start the car. Oh, the killer's coming! The kill let's get out of here! Are you looking for a new mattress? <laughs> ah, stab, 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 stab. <laughs> so look, if car manufacturers want subscription plans, that's fine. You know, pay for the parts of the car that you only want when you use them. I think that actually works. <laughs> Although, you better be warned, if you forget to renew the wrong subscriptions, well, that shit could end in tears. <laughs> oh, 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 shit, I knew I should have renewed the brake subscription. Oh, all right, you got me, BMW. One more month, one more month of brakes, please. Wait, wait, $7.99 for one month and then 50 for a year. Is that cheaper? Is that, what, what is that? That's seven, seven times 12. That equals, it's gonna be, oh! Oh, seven times 12, it's cheaper. I'm gonna get I'm fine. All right, that's it for the headlines. But before we go to a quick break, let's check in on the stock market with our finance expert, Michael Costa, everybody. <laughs> you okay? Michael, you okay? You again? Yeah. So, uh, what's happening in the markets, man? Uh, the market, you okay? First of all, that was a, that was a, that was a tumble. Yeah, took, yeah. That, wasn't, that wasn't real. Oh, it wasn't real. Okay, no. huge. All right, got it. It was great. Um, <laughs> I'm crushing the markets, dude. Crushing, crushing, still? crushing, still crushing. And okay. I got a hot tip for you. I got a hot tip for all you. Pay attention, all right? So let's get into this. Uh, okay, well, actually, first of all, uh, BMW, the subscription for the warm seats. Yeah. Right? I mean, I'm over all these subscriptions, okay? I was trying to print something recently, and my printer was like, hey, do you want to sign up for an ink subscription? So why would I give my credit card to a printing company when I can just do all my personal printing here at work, okay? I mean, I'm... Trevor, I print manuals, encyclopedias, health records, thousands of pages, you know? I print so much, it's actually easier for me just to take one of the work printers home with me. <laughs> and now I print from work at home. I can print anything you want. You just let me know, I got printed for it. Oh, I, I will, I will. Let me know, I got a hot tip. Two. Okay. Don't forget, I got a hot tip for you guys. We All right, let's, let's get to this. What's happening in the oh, market? I'll show you. Oh, you know what? That European heat wave. Yes. That, that's hot. That is hot. I was just in Ireland for a couple days. It's, it's hot. It's hot. And they don't handle the heat well there, okay? I mean, how are you going to cool off? Drink a lukewarm Guinness and have some piping hot shepherd's pie? You know what I mean? Mmm, this gravy is so refreshing, you know? <laughs> it is hot in Europe. And with the Euro now, when you're in Europe, you're hot and you're broke. I was thinking, I haven't been this hot and broke since I was 18, living in LA, doing shirtless auditions for independent films that never got made. The director said that they're caught up in editing, but it's been about 20 years, Trevor, so. All right, 
I got a hot tip for you, don't forget. I, I okay. won't forget, Mike. Okay, you got a hot tip. All right, let's break down this Euro chart. I mean, look, this thing looks like you're skiing down the Swiss Alps, am I right? <laughs> Now, I know that because thanks to how low the Euro is, I can afford to now ski down the Swiss Alps. <laughs> this is great news for all of us. It is. <laughs> Europe, Europe is now cheap for us in America. You know, think about Americans love going to Mexico because it's so cheap. Well, what we didn't realize was this whole previous time, America was Mexico to, to Europe, <laughs> right? But now that's swapped. Europe is our Mexico, and we got Mexico, right? <laughs> we have two Mexicos. No other country in the world has two Mexicos. Think about that. Now, what I like about this is this has dropped the Europeans' cockiness a little bit, you know? Some French, oh, you Americans, you're so overweight. And I'm thinking, yeah, maybe we are overweight because maybe we've just stuffed our pockets with our currency, <laughs> right? And it's weighing us down. <laughs> I promised you a hot tip. Yeah, you've been okay, promising okay, okay. me the whole time. Hot tip. In Europe, you don't tip, oh. right? And it's hot there. I wonder how many people invest on your yeah. advice. Michael Costa, yeah. everybody. Yeah.